All right, guys, I got a short one for you today. All we did was I put everything back on the bench and I grabbed my stock TPI runners that do have a little bit of work done to them. I'll show you the work when we take it off the bench. And I think Rob will be pleasantly pleased to see how they do, even though they're tiny. We're going to do, uh, we'll do the cross section and stuff with those and get, we got some air speeds at the mouth of the runner. And, uh, it was, it was bad because I wasn't even able to put a piece of clay on it because there's just not enough metal to hold it. Now these have been modified because my TPI plenum is, uh, like an infinity sign. It doesn't have the divider in there anymore. I'll show you that too. But I don't know if, how much more testing I'm going to do on the plain Jane stuff. Uh, as it sits now, this all flows, I think, quite a bit better than any of the 083 stuff that I did on uh, the Speed Talk thread. Okay, when I say mildly modified, I mean I put a little bit of a radius around it. As you can still see this, there's a big bump I left. I must have missed it. But uh, that's how it was tested. I couldn't even put clay on it. There's no, no meat there to hold the clay. It just got sucked right in. What a pain. You can see the back of the tube, completely stock. If we look deeper down the tube, you see how on the inside radius, it's all black. We're going to figure out why that is that way. The other end of the thread's got a big dent to make room for your wrench, for your bolt to hold it down. And it was just uh, evened up at the very bottom. Literally five minutes of grinding on each, on each hole. Okay, so what we're going to do is, this is what you guys saw last. We did very well through the base itself. Now we just bolted on the runner. Now I would expect to get quite a bit of a loss because the runners are small compared to the base. Okay, the base is designed for aftermarket runners. But the SLP runners that I had didn't do much better than the, the stockers. In fact, I think they topped out less. So we did our flows and we did our swirl. Notice our swirl is way less. Way less until 400. Okay. Where were we? Interruption, interruption, interruption. Okay, on the low lift, it was good. It actually gained a little bit. That gained more than our cylinder head bear, uh, I think. 76.8. Yeah, more than the cylinder head bear. And you've got quite a long runner at that point. So that's kind of interesting, right, guys? Lose a little, lose a little more. Keep losing all the way down. I was interested in how it held on. It basically, you couldn't really get much more through the pipe itself. And we lose it on the short side right around here. So that's why it went down a bit. But still, it held on. Now, if that was as as bad as we got, of course, we still have to go through the plenum. We still have to go through the throttle body. It's going to be less than that all, all combined. But you can put a big throttle body on it and do a lot of work to the to the plenum. My plenum is fully modified. It's not going to make that big a loss. Now, if you see my drawing here, okay, it's the same as this, right? With the tube coming down. What Rob would like to do is he'd like to concentrate on the air speeds through the entire throttle body, plenum, runners, base, and cylinder head which is going to make it a lot harder than just slapping an AFR-190 on it and hoping for the best, like uh, most guys do. So I decided we got it to the bench. Let's take a look. Now, I basically knew what was going to happen when I started taking airspeeds on this. Okay. The center is 292. Now, that was taken right after this little radius I put on, like right about here. Okay, so it's going to be relatively the same all the way around because it was taken around the same place all the way around. Okay, you would figure it would be a little bit faster than the sidewalls. We got 276, 274. 
Now, the outside of the turn, much lower air speeds. Inside of the turn, much higher air speeds. Kind of the opposite you would think of uh, what would happen. You know, you go around a corner, you, the centrifugal force pushes her to the outside. Air doesn't work that way. Okay, it wants the shortest path. Kind of interesting, right? So, what, like what I did with the SLPs, let me pull up the dirty SLPs. Okay, here's a piece of the SLP. Yeah, I cut these open in order to port them completely. I figured I'd take them together afterwards. But if you take a look at the floor, notice how wide the floor is. It's literally a D shape. It goes from a circle to a D shape through the whole, the whole runner. The other side, I brought it out to a radius because I wasn't 100% sure how it's going, going to align. That could be right and that could be wrong. The reason it's relatively sharp divider, even though I'm not really a fan of sharp dividers, I kept it relatively straight. Usually I would round that, to be honest. I don't know why it's straight, but that's how it was done for testing. Okay, the other end of the SLPs are open to get uh, more area for the runner to pull on. Okay, let me piece these together and you can see what I was thinking of. Okay, I'm going to one-hand it. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that. But you can see why I made it thin, because I need it to align. So I have to put it all together on a manifold with gaskets and everything, and then TIG it. And then see what I can... Uh, clean up on the inside. In any case, all that work with those SLPs didn't really make any difference. Now, of course, I was going through a set of 083s that flowed like 260. This head flows like 276. It's There's a noticeable difference there. But when we take a look, we're topping out around 230. You can make some decent power through 230. Now, so far, it looks like it's going to be uh, 350 cubic inch. So he's going to use his stock L98 short block. It's going to have a different cam. Hopefully, uh, we have Mike Jones design a cam for it because uh, that's got to be worth at least 20, 20, 25 horsepower and 20, 25 foot pounds over a shelf cam, I would think. And... Uh, Sometimes it's worth investing with the experts and let them do their thing. This is, uh, I think, camshafts in one of them. Like DV says, of course, just as much for put the wrong cam in as the right cam. Yeah, but if you have someone design it for your application, it's going to cost a few extra bucks, but it'll be worth it. All right, guys, I think this is going to be short. We got Mark coming with his son with all the JAG stuff. I got to clean this bench up a little bit so we can work in peace as it is the garage is really small and cramped so we're going to make the best of it unfortunately i don't think the ac is going to hold on it's going to get hot in here in no time if we run the bench for a while but he's bringing all kinds of cool stuff he's bringing his jag head his cutaways i got him to bring a piston and rod because i want to see how it's designed he's bringing some gaskets head gasket some valves, some locks, some retainers. We should be able to get something done today. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night. You know what? Just one other quick thing. These runners are super thin. You can't really take any metal out of them. They are paper thin. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks.